San La Muerte, or Saint Death, is a South American folk saint with a grim reaper-like image who is worked with by devotees for a variety of things, from gambling and vengeance to love and protection. Hello everyone, today we will be taking a look at another folk saint venerated within folk Catholicism, a male personification of death known as San La Muerte, not to be confused with the female folk saint of death, Santa Muerte, who is venerated heavily in Mexico. I'm Leroy and I review tarot decks and occult literature. I also make content regarding magic and saint work. So if you're drawn to that kind of content, then consider subscribing as I upload new content regularly. Now let's go ahead and get into the video. San La Muerte, or Saint Death, is known by a few other names such as Señor de la Muerte, or Lord of Death, Señor de la Buena Muerte, or Lord of the Good Dead, and San Esqueleto, or Saint Skeleton. Saint Skeleton is a name mainly used in Paraguay. He is venerated in Latin America, especially in Argentina, with the city of Corrientes referred to as the devotional epicenter of San La Muerte, and the area is influenced not only by Catholicism, but also by Umbanda and Kimbanda. Corrientes suffered greatly during the financial crisis that hit Argentina in 2002, with devotion to San La Muerte seemingly gaining momentum and visibility during these crisis years. The Argentine cities of Misiones, Chaco, and Formosa are also areas of heavy devotion. In southern Brazil, the cities of Parana, Santa Catarina, and Rio Grande do Sul are places known for his veneration as well. Other places of his veneration are Paraguay, as well as the greater Buenos Aires area, especially within the national prison system there. There are a variety of stories floating around about the origins of this folk saint, and here I will share some that I have heard. Details vary account to account depending on who was telling these legends of his origins, and it's always interesting when there are different and unique stories surrounding the beginnings of a particular folk saint. There is currently no official account of the origins of his worship. He's venerated in the Guarani language regions that cover parts of Paraguay, northeastern Argentina, and southern Brazil. It is believed that he was first venerated among the indigenous Guarani Indians following the expulsion of their Jesuit missionaries in 1767, as their previous beliefs became enmeshed with their newly imported Catholic faith. Stories change from devotee to devotee, and he is believed to have been a religious man, possibly a Jesuit, known for his healing powers, who was, in some accounts, accused of witchcraft, incarcerated, and starved by his adversaries and subsequently found in his skeletal form within his cell. In his skeleton form, he is said to have pointed out his accuser in a terrifying manner, and that within a few days, everyone involved with his incarceration died of mysterious illnesses. There is a second story that is very non-specific, and this is the tale of the Guarani tribes, that when the tribe's witch doctor or kind of village medic was about to die, or if he simply reached a certain elderly age, that it would come time for him to transfer his powers to someone younger, so that the tribe will always have some type of medic or shaman. For this, they would have to select a young man, a young person with certain traits, and this person would have to undergo a kind of ritual of initiation that included, among other things, having to go into the jungle absolutely alone without food or water for seven days. The selected person would also be forbidden from telling a single soul where it is he would be. In this legend, a selected youth goes into the forest for the ritual of initiation, but before he does so, he tells his love, his girlfriend, where in the jungle he will be. Many days pass, and his love could no longer stand it knowing where he was and so she went out and looked for him. She found him starved, nearly skin and bones, eaten by ants. She was very sad and took a piece of one of his fingers to remember him by. She made it back home and as the days passed, her mother became gravely ill. The girl took this piece of finger and held it close to her chest and asked earnestly for her mother to be cured. Her mother magically recovered and after that, they attributed the ability to cure to San La Muerte. A third origin story I heard is that he spent time as a human king and that he was just and that he was righteous and kind. And when he died, he appeared before God and God led him to some kind of enormous room where there were millions and millions of candles 
at different heights and at different positions around the room. And God explained to him, to this king, that these candles represented the lives of living people and that his task was that when one of these candles flames goes out, that he was to go and search for that soul and bring it before God. San La Muerte appears as a skeleton clad in a hooded cloak or robe, often wielding a sickle or a scythe, and his scythe sometimes appears covered in blood or with drops of blood on it. His scythe is said to represent that everyone is equal before God and that everyone will pass when their hour comes. He is often depicted with simple minimalistic features, dressed in black or red garments, and he can also appear in a cape. He may be sitting, standing, or even shown without a scythe, or as a skeleton sitting inside of a coffin. His eyes are red in some statues and art. His robes are often completely open where you can see his entire skeletal body, or partially open to where you can see his ribcage. He may also appear crowned, holding a head between his hands. This last image of him may be called at times San Justo, San Bernardo, or San Paciencia, commonly in Buenos Aires. San La Muerte is said to have a very heavy energy to him, but I cannot verify that statement. Devotees who work with him for a wide array of things, including restoring love, making someone desire you, good fortune, luck in gambling, good health, causing illness, protection against enemies, protection against witchcraft, removing the evil eye, protection against imprisonment, inmates, prisoners, keeping people from being sent to prison, shortening prison terms, requests related to crime and violence, recovering stolen items, protection from or invulnerability to bullet fire, vengeance, bringing death to enemies, for punishing others, for money, for finding a job, and for performing miracles. He can also appear in dreams and cause premonitions. Devotion involves prayers, rituals, and offerings, which are given directly to the saint in expectation of, and tailored to, the fulfillment of specific requests. One thing that makes working with this saint different from other saints is that instead of requesting favors from the saint, you would demand them. His devotion is based on punishment and submission, with devotees threatening the saint. Common threats include hunger or banishment to an uninhabited place until the favor is granted. When the favor is granted, the saint will be rewarded and fed, but never fully in order to increase the chances of being willing to grant another favor soon. When making an exchange with him, it is important to fulfill your end of the bargain and to do what you promised because if you don't come through on your end, it could end disastrously for you. And as some say, the saint's bad side will come out, while others say that he is being just. Practitioners and sorcerers do a lot of magical workings with him and with some using him for harm and others using him for good. Communication with San La Muerte takes place through prayers that are passed between believers and there is a certain secrecy surrounding his devotion for fear of the saint's power and willingness to harm in case secrecy itself is broken. In order to work with him as a devotee, it seems one may have to seek out a teacher or someone familiar with prayers to him and the inner workings of his veneration practices. The sculptures play an enormous role in the devotion to the saint and they are how he is interacted with. The sculptures come in varying sizes and the very small ones are referred to as santitos or small saints. How he is represented varies according to the sculptor who crafted him. San La Muerte sculptures can be carved from wood, guiac trees, and cedar, from metals such as gold, especially metal from bullets, and animal bones. Increased power is attributed to sculptures crafted from material of significant origin, such as the last phalanx bone of the little finger, a bone from the body of a dead baby who's been baptized, wood taken from a person's coffin that has passed away, or from a crucifix that belonged to someone recently deceased, for example. Some devotees feel that in order for San La Muerte statues to be able to grant favors, it needs to be consecrated by a Catholic priest seven times. If the statue was carved from the bone of a Catholic man, then it only needs to be carved five times. Sometimes worshippers will hide an image of San La Muerte beneath an image of another saint in order to trick a priest into blessing the image. When a priest blesses the image, it is felt that San La Muerte underneath has also been blessed. Sometimes kept as a concealed household saint, 
Altars to him are at times hidden from view, including the altars of intermediaries, such as curanderos or witches for hire, for example. It's said that keeping an altar to him in the home extends his protection upon all family members with no distinction. Some devotees also work with other saints alongside San La Muerte, with their images and statues on the same altar as him, including Catholic saints and folk saints, from the Virgin of Marian Devotion to Gachito Gil. Common offerings to San La Muerte include food, flowers, alcohol, valuables, candles, cigarettes and cigars, cell phones and even a devotee's own blood, as well as other offerings. Many devotees believe that having a sculpture ensures personal and non-transferable protection that will only be accessible when the original owner dies and the statue is acquired by a new owner. There are also personal forms that the statue can take for his devotees, including wearing amulets, and amulets made from fired bullets, preferably those that have wounded or killed a Christian man, are regarded as the most powerful raw material for amulets. Human bone, silver, and gold are also commonly used for the construction of amulets. Tattoos are another common form of an image to him, with tattoos ranging in style and art, and often accompanied by partial or complete transcriptions of prayers to him. Some San La Muerte carvings are placed in the body or inserted under the skin of the worshipper. Often inmates will practice devotion in this way. They introduce a little effigy of the saint under their skin in order to obtain a good death as well as protection from assaults and violence, usually using the bone of a baptized Christian. In Buenos Aires, tattoos rather than insertions are used. Tattoos, amulets, and body insertions are believed to offer special protection from death, bodily harm, and imprisonment. There are a few public shrines to San La Muerte, but the shrine keepers' practices vary, with some being intolerant of people praying to San La Muerte for harm to others or violent kinds of things. These altars are ran by devotees, and some of them host public festivities on August 15th, seen as San La Muerte's Saint Day. His feast day was not assigned by the church, and the day is somewhat contested, with some saying that his day is August 13th instead of the 15th, and others still celebrate him any time between August 15th and August 20th. The celebrations in his honor usually include singing, music, and dancing, processions, the rosary, and the preparation and feasting of grilled meats. Gauchito Gil, a prominent Argentinian folk hero turned folk saint, is also closely tied to San La Muerte. He is thought to have lived in the 1800s and was a devotee of San La Muerte himself, and they are at times depicted alongside one another. It's interesting to me for a folk saint to have been a devotee of another folk saint, but not all stories tie the folk saints together, and the cowboy saint being devoted to San La Muerte is something that not all devotees believe in or agree on. Many practicing Catholics venerate San La Muerte as part of their faith, viewing him as the angel of death mentioned in the Bible, or as another powerful divine force created by God, not unlike the archangels. The church, naturally, disagrees with his veneration and views it as syncretizing pagan and Christian practices, although not all priests are intolerant of San La Muerte devotion. Among the public, there is a lot of fear, misinformation, and mystery surrounding San La Muerte and those who work with him. Associated with crime, violence, and evil in the eyes of some, he is a polarizing figure, not even taking into account his skeletal appearance, not unlike the Grim Reaper. He is also associated with criminals and with marginalized groups of people, which are people who look down on all too often. Devotees view him as being just and righteous, and some feel he has a large capacity for empathizing with the suffering of his devotees because he was a religious unjustly persecuted and died an atrocious death, at least in some accounts of his origins. Some say that he is jealous and vengeful if one does not show enough gratefulness for received favors, and there is a story of a politician who was helped by San La Muerte to win the elections but did not show any thankfulness afterwards, and eventually he was punished with the death of his daughter. Sometimes these kinds of stories act as cautionary tales to dissuade would-be devotees away from working with certain beings, and at other times, these tales are true. This video is by no means a template to begin working with San La Muerte, 
but rather a guide to introduce him to you, to give you insight into another folk saint and his unique devotional practices, and to help dispel a little bit of confusion between San La Muerte and Santa Muerte. As I know some people would confuse the two, or not know enough about San La Muerte to truly differentiate him from Santa Muerte in general. This folk saint was interesting to do research on, and I learned a lot of information that was eye-opening and really made me look at Saint Veneration through a new lens. What do you all feel about the interesting veneration practices surrounding San La Muerte? I'd like for all of you to weigh in, especially if you are a devotee of his or know somebody who is, as I've never met or spoken to a devotee of San La Muerte before, as far as I know. This video took a lot of research and time spent piecing things together, so if you found value in this content, then drop a like, I'd really appreciate it as it helps the channel to grow. And of course, consider subscribing to this channel for similar content going into the future. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I will see you in the next one.